Hello, and welcome to the lecture on NCES's secondary data. My name is Chris Curran, and I'm an assistant professor of public policy at the UMBC School of Public Policy. In this lecture, I'll be introducing a series of data sets available from the National Center for Education Statistics that can be used for a variety of educational research purposes. But just to begin, let's have a quick introduction to NCES, the government agency that conducts these surveys and provides this data. The NCES, as I mentioned, stands for the National Center for Education Statistics. The NCES is the primary federal entity for collecting and analyzing education statistics. It actually does this as part of a congressional mandate that requires the government to collect such statistics. Structurally, NCES is located within the U.S. Department of Education and specifically within the Institute of Education Sciences. So as you use NCES data sets, you'll often encounter people or references online that refer to these as Department of Education data or IES data. In general, these all refer to the same thing. So a little bit about the structure of NCES. Broadly speaking, it's divided into three parts, uh, three sections of which different surveys and different data uh, collecting mechanisms fall within. So to begin with, we have the assessments division. And some of the more common surveys that you may encounter within the assessment division include the NAEP, which is the National Assessment of Educational Progress, a periodic indicator of the progress of the states and the United States as a whole with regard to education, as well as some of the international assessments, such as PISA, TIMS, um, that basically collect education statistics both for the United States and other countries. The second division is the Sample Surveys Division. So sample surveys are generally surveys that NCES collects that are specific to either different grade levels or different purposes for understanding education in the United States. And within the sample surveys division, they generally categorize surveys within either a longitudinal category, so surveys that follow students or schools over time, or cross-sectional surveys, so surveys that provide a snapshot at one point in time about some aspect of the United States education system. So we'll talk a little bit about, and you've probably encountered in previous classes or in some of the readings, a few of these data sets. One of the ones that I use commonly and that's a favorite in my research is the ECLS or ECLS data set. The ECLS stands for the Early Childhood Longitudinal Study, and it's a longitudinal data system that looks at elementary schools and into middle school. We'll actually talk a bit more about it in a second. Other data sets that can be quite useful from here are the SAS, that's the Schools and Staffing Survey. Uh, the SOX, the School Survey on Crime and Safety, and then a variety of surveys that tap different aspects of high school. So NCES actually has conducted a series of longitudinal studies, um, including the High School Longitudinal Study, ELS, NELS, and High School and Beyond, that grab aspects of the high school experience. The third division of data for NCES is administrative data. So administrative data involves uh, some data sets such as iPads. So for those of you interested in higher education, iPads can be a very, very valuable resource that tracks institutional level data uh, about most every university in the country. At the K-12 level, uh, data sets such as the CCD, the Common Core of Data, provide good institutional level data on both schools and school districts for public and private schools in the United States. So as you can see, the NCES data sets fall in a variety of categories. Some focus on domestic aspects of education, others on international aspects. Some surveys are longitudinal, following either schools or students or subjects over time, while others are cross-sectional, providing just a snapshot at one point in time. Some of the data sets are student level, such as the ECLS, which follows individual students, while others are institutional, such as the IPEDS, which follows uh, just aspects of higher education institutions. So depending on the types of research questions that you are interested in, there is probably going to be out there some kind of data set from NCES that can provide secondary data to address those questions. So let's turn now to look at a few of these data sets in a little bit more detail, just to give you a flavor for the type of questions and type of research that can be, ducted, can be conducted with secondary NCES data. All right, so as I mentioned, one of my favorites is the ECLS-K. So the ECLSK or ECLS-K stands for the Early Childhood Longitudinal Study. And as I mentioned, it's a longitudinal, a nationally representative sample of kindergartners who are followed from kindergarten through middle school. Now, one of the unique things about the ECLSK is that it's actually been conducted twice. So the original ECLS was begun in 98-99 with a set of kindergartners, and it followed those kindergartners through their eighth grade experience, which allowed for a rich variety of research on the experiences of students as they progress through elementary school and just uh, reach the stage right before the high school level. 
Uh, they've actually, though, just begun a new Eccles with the 2010-2011 cohort. So this has uh, offered a variety of different possibilities. Not only can we replicate studies that were conducted with the original Eccles, but we can also look descriptively at changes that have occurred in the experiences of elementary school students over time. So there's some recent papers out that compare the content taught in kindergarten in 98-99 with the content taught in kindergarten in 2010-2011. One of the rich things about the ECHLs and a lot of the NCES data sets is that they have a number of surveys. So the ECHLs has surveys of both students, parents, teachers, special education teachers, school administrators, librarians, and a number of other individuals who are stakeholders in the educational experiences of these children. What that means is that there's thousands, I believe over 10,000 variables even, uh, that are applicable for all of the students in ECHLs. So it allows you to do very, very rich analysis on many aspects of a student's experience. All right, so another data set is the ELLS. So the ELLS comes from the series of high school data sets that I mentioned before. So over time, uh, NCES has actually conducted a series of longitudinal data sets beginning with uh, 10th graders or sometimes 9th graders and following them often past high school and into the early aspects of the college experience and even into the workforce. So the ELLS is one example from this series of data sets. It's a longitudinal design following a nationally representative set of 10th graders and it follows these 10th graders through college and actually into the workforce. So this makes ELLS and similar uh, data sets from this high school series very, very powerful for asking questions not just about high school, but also about the college experience, and then thinking about how these high school and college experiences have implications for later, later market aspects, such as income, the ability to buy a house, start a family, and so forth, that we may think are very, very important policy outcomes. All right, so we've looked then at two longitudinal data sets, the ECHLs and the ELLS. Let's take a look at a few that are cross-sectional. Uh, one of the ones that I've used before is the School Survey on Crime and Safety, sometimes called SOX. It's a cross-sectional, nationally representative sample of schools and administrators. So unlike the NELS and the ELLS and the ECLSK and some of those other data sets, this one is not student level. Instead, the SOX gives you information at the uh, level of the institution, the level of the school. So that uh, puts some limits on the type of questions that you can ask, but at the same time, it can uh, still be a quite valuable resource for thinking about policies and practices within schools. The SOX uh, asks a lot of questions, as you might guess from its name, about school violence, bullying, and the related policies and practices that schools use to handle these issues. Now, I mentioned that SOX is cross-sectional. However, one of the nice aspects about many of the cross-sectional NCES data sets is that they're actually conducted multiple times. So, you could think of the SOX as being a cross-sectional but repeated cross-section design. So even though we can't track the same schools over time, we can see a snapshot in 98 and follow that with a snapshot sometime later in the 2000s. And so at least at a, a, a national level, we can get an idea for how certain uh, aspects of school violence and the policies and practices related to these have been changing over time. Another one of my favorite uh, cross-sectional data sets from NCES is the SAS. And the SAS is the Schools and Staffing Survey. Uh, like the SOX, it's cross-sectional, nationally representative sample of schools, administrators, and it actually includes some data on teachers. The SAS is a very, very rich data set for answering questions related to human capital and staffing issues. So almost any study that you've seen that looks at teacher turnover, there's a very, very high likelihood that that was using SAS data. Now, just like the SOX, the SAS is a repeated cross-section. So the first was conducted in 1987, and I think they're up to their seventh or eighth iteration of this in the last few years. So even though, you, again, you can't follow the same schools or the same administrators over time, you can see trends in the different aspects that are uh, surveyed in the SAS data set. All right, so that gives you a feeling of just a few of the NCES data sets. There are many more, as you gathered from the infographic at the beginning. What we're going to have you do now is actually take a look at some of these different data sets and explore these opportunities. So you will find in the accompanying file an activity to gain better familiarity with NCES's data sets. It will walk you through exploring a few of the data sets and looking into those that you think could be most fruitful for your research agenda. So I thank you for taking a look at this uh, quick overview of NCES data sets. I hope this kind of paints a broad picture of some of the available data that you'll be diving into as we progress in the semester. Thank you so much.